All right, all right. Good evening, good evening, good evening. And welcome to Empowering Word Christian Center. I am Pastor Alvin White, and this is my lovely wife, Pastor LaToya, and we welcome you in the name of the Lord. Glory be to God. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us tonight. Let somebody know that we are live tonight right now. Text somebody, inbox somebody, smoke signal somebody. Let somebody know that we are live and we are having a special election uh, uh, prophetic update, a special election update having to do with the prophetic. All right. Now, we want to welcome those of you that are watching the playback. Thank you very much. You can like and share, send this out. And we want to welcome those of you that are watching the YouTube uploaded version. Thank you so much. We welcome you. And we want to thank everybody for being on live right now. Glory be to God. We welcome you. And if you're here for the very first time, we know that you're not at, uh, here on accident, but you're here on purpose for God's purpose. And so we welcome you. And we want you to download the free Empowering Word Christian Center Church app is for Android and Apple users. And you can keep up with the date with all the goings on with Empowering Word Christian Center. And you can let us know who you are. There's different forms and different things. You can follow events and uh, read the Bible and, and uh, daily devotionals, a lot of different things. So go ahead and download the Empowering Word Christian Center Church app. We normally don't have this on Saturday night. I don't plan on keeping you long, um, but I want to give you a prophetic update. Pastor Latoya and I give you a prophetic update. So with that said, who is on right now? We just want to welcome everybody that's on. Uh, we want to say hello to you. Glory be to God. Hello, uh, Elijah and Alyssa Braddox. Good evening. Pat Walter, good evening. Elders Robert and Tracy Carr, good evening. Good evening. Hello. Uh, let's see here. Marsha Wright, hello. Good evening. We see you. Mary Bolden, good evening. Elders Stephen and Rochelle Taylor, hello. Good evening. Terrence and Carolyn Berry, hello. Good evening. Praise God. And uh, other people, you know, praise God. Hallelujah. Welcome. 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 Glory be to God. Now, um, we now have, uh, obviously, I'm pretty sure everyone knows the news, the breaking news that broke late this morning, and that is Joe Biden is now president-elect of the United States of America, and Kamala Harris is now vice president-elect of the United States of America. And Joe Biden will be the 46th president of these United States of America. And so we want to jump on because, oh, hello, Eddie and B. Huey. Hello. God bless, God bless you. you. How are you guys? Um, so we want to come on and we want to let you know uh, what the Lord has spoken. Now, if I have any leadership on this uh, Empowering Word Christian Center leadership. You are part of the leadership team. Now, this, this live was just spontaneous. God put it in our heart, said go live, and I want you to tell them the prophetic vision. If any leadership that is on this, and what I'm about to say, I want you to verify this is true. I want you to verify, put something on the timeline saying that what you're about to hear, this prophetic vision, has been prophesied and was true. All right? So, in late April of this year, 2020, God put me in a vision. He gave me a vision. And when we talk about visions, um, the Bible sometimes describe them as, you know, in the book of Acts where Peter went into a trance or whatever. And it's hard for me to, uh, articulate and explain what this looks like, but sometimes I'm just walking around or doing whatever, maybe doing some housework. I don't even know what I was doing at the time. I don't even know. 
I don't even recall what it was. But what happened was, is I zoomed out and I saw the 2020 election. And what God showed me is that President Donald J. Trump lost. And now former Vice President Joe Biden won. I saw that. So if you are part of the leadership team, put something down there, let the people know that this is true, that you did, that this had been seen, that this had, had been verified. Now I have told only, I had told only some people around me, some friends around me, people around me, and our leadership team. These are the only people that I told because the Lord had not released me to tell and provide that vision. All right, is this true? Elder Stephen and Rochelle Taylor, is this true? Hello, Connie Cameron, is this true? Any leadership, let the people know. Yes, El Elders Robert and Tracy Carr, yes, this is true. Pat, this is true, yes, this is true. This is the vision. And I guess the best way, yes, Marshall, this is true. Yes, Elijah, yep, months ago, I let you know, this was going, I said, listen, now, what I told the leadership is, is we need to pray. Now, there's more to the vision, and I'm going to let you know. But I told the leadership, I'm not sure if this is thus saith the Lord. Why? Why did I say that? Because when you're talking about something on this grand of scale, this magnitude, I want to be right in hearing what God said. Amen? Amen. I want to make sure that whatever it is, I want to be right. I don't want to, I don't want to prophesy. I want to prophesy. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. So in that, um, God showed me this vision and he showed me what I saw. Let me tell you what I saw. I saw the White House and it was darkness nighttime over the White House. And I saw a television news program that said Donald Trump lost, President Trump lost, and uh, now former Vice President Biden won, and now Biden is president-elect. I saw that. I told my wife, the, the thing that I, I told her, the uh, first thing I told her, right away. And so in that, here's what happened. Um, I just begin to pray and I just begin to say, Hey, you know, whatever the Lord says, you know, we'll, we'll, let's just pray about this. I told my wife, mm -hmm. let's just pray about this. So with that said, um, I just kept it in prayer. Now there's more to the vision that you're going to have to hear. And I said, okay, Lord, well, okay, we're going to just pray about it. And some people gave me their feedback based on the people that I've told. And I said that, you know, okay, well, you know, we're just going to continue to pray. And the Lord began to really deal with me and tell me, yes, you are saying, hearing from me. But again, I always want to make sure that I am right when I say something. And so he hadn't released me to uh, uh, give it publicly. He hadn't released me to do that, okay? Now, all around the body of Christ, well, back up. After that, God told me that I want you to go into a series called God's Prophetic Agenda. Mm -hmm. I began that series in June of this year. In mm -hmm. fact, June 24th, it was a Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. God said, I want you to start a brand new series. Mm -hmm. I came off the series church. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, it was 2020 vision and faith. So it was 2020 vision and faith. It was the series church. And then it was God's prophetic agenda. Mm -hmm. And that's the series that we're still on to this day. Mm -hmm. And so in that, God's prophetic agenda, he gave me a whole vision of what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. And he told me to tell the people 
that we are now in Matthew 24. I need you to hear me that he said we have stepped into Matthew 24 mm -hmm. and this is not about man's agenda or what they want. This is about what must come to pass. Mm -hmm. And so he said this has to do with Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris wasn't even on the ticket then. Right, I don't right. think Kamala Harris no. came until what? Maybe August? Yeah, when you had when you had the vision, she wasn't on the ticket. She wasn't even on the ticket. I didn't even know who she was, really. No. And so all I saw was Joe Biden won the presidency. And in that, what I said, Lord, are you sure this is right? Because all the prophets of the land are saying that President Trump will have a second term. That's all the prophets. Have you, have you, let me know. Have you heard the prophets talking about President Trump is going to have a second term? Have you heard this? I have heard all the prophets, the all the yeah, pastors, the large, platform. large platform prophets, large pa platform pastors. I've heard it all around that President Trump would win the election. Mm -hmm. And I said, Lord, did you really tell little me here that this is not going to be true? And he said, listen, you heard what you heard. Now, make sure you keep that. Now, obviously, what happened? Today, November 7th, 2020, we see that President-elect Joe Biden has now won the 2020 presidential election of the United States. How did that happen, folks? How did that happen? How did I see a vision and how did so many pastors and prophets get it wrong? How, 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 how did so many prophets and pastors get it wrong? And I'm going to tell you, here's why. This is from the scripture. Oh boy. This is from Jeremiah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 This is from Jeremiah 23, verse 26. Go there real quickly. Jeremiah 23, verse 26. Oh boy, which one do I want to go to? Yes. Jeremiah 23, verse 26. Now, this is true. And my leadership team can vouch for it. Yeah. Now. It says this, it says the prophet who has a dream, no, 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 let's see here, let me make sure I'm right, let me make sure I'm right, okay, listen to this, uh, I'm going to go to verse 25, it says, I have heard what the prophets had said, who prophesied lies in my name, saying I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long will this be the heart of the prophets who prophesy lies? Indeed, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart who try to make my people forget my name by their dreams, which everyone tells his neighbor as the fathers forget my name, forget, forgot my name for Baal. What is God saying? They prophesied what was in their heart. <laughs> Hear me. Listen, listen, people of God. Listen to me, church. We are in a very, the body of Christ is in a very critical state because God says he will not do anything without letting the prophets know and if the prophets are prophesying what that what's in their heart, they will not give direction to the body of Christ. Yeah. Hear me. We need prophets that will prophesy God's word and not their biases. That's right. Remember, you are a spirit, you live in a body, and you possess a soul. Yes. And so the soul is it's there's renewed part and there's carnal part. And if you have something in your heart of what you want to see, 
then what'll happen is if your heart is impure, you will mingle it around yeah. to make it be the word of God and make it be the prophet of God. And God is saying, no, 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 no. That is not what I said. Yes. And so, so many prophets, I'm not going to name names, but you know, and you can look them up. So many prophets went on record talking about Donald Trump would win the election. And I'm telling you, they prophesied wrong. And now I'm hearing that they're altering their prophecies. Now they're saying he's going to win it in the courts and then God is going to expose corruption. God says that's more of the same. That is not what he has said. God says nothing will happen of the courts. Hear the word of the Lord. Nothing will happen of the courts. Hear the word of the Lord. I don't care who prophesied what. I know exactly what God is saying. And you have people that are hanging on to false prophecies. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Let me go to Ezekiel. Let me go to Ezekiel. And some of y'all, I know some of y'all may not like this, but I'm going to give you the word of the Lord. And some of y'all might be saying, well, how come God would do this? And what is God doing? This is God's agenda. This is God's prophetic agenda. In Ezekiel chapter 13 and verse, um, uh, let's see here, verse uh, one. I'm just going to start in verse one. Honey, can you read that from the new Living Translation, Ezekiel chapter 13 and verse 1 and read it uh, all the way down to verse 9 in the New Living Translation. Praise be to God. Then this message came to me from the Lord, son of man, prophesy against the false prophets of Israel who are inventing their own prophecies. Inventing their own prophecies. Go ahead. Say to them, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. What sorrow awaits the false prophets who are following their own imaginations and have seen nothing at all. Wow. They're following their own imaginations. They haven't seen nothing at all. Oh, people of Israel. These prophets of yours are like jackals digging in the ruins. Mm. They have done nothing to repair the breaks in the walls around the nations, Jesus. These prophets have done nothing to prepare to what do you say? To repair the breaks in the walls around to the break to repair the breaks. And the walls around the nation. This is what God gave me. I said, God, what is saying? What are you saying? What are you saying? And he said, they have done nothing to repair the walls, the, the breaks and the walls around the nation. Go ahead. They have not helped it stand firm in battle on the day of the Lord. Instead, they have told lies. Woo! And made false predictions. They have told lies and made false predictions. They say this message is from the Lord, even though the Lord never sent them. And yet they expect him to fulfill their prophecies. This is what's going on right now. These people in this circle, they are travailing before God. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get God to fulfill their own prophecy. Hey, let's pray like we've never prayed before. Hey, let's say things in our prayers that we've never said before. Let's pray, 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 let's pray. That's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. Why? Because they are trying to get God to fulfill something that he never said. Jesus. Can your visions be anything but false if you claim this message is from the Lord when I have not even spoken to you. Wow. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says, because what you say is false and your visions are a lie. I will stand against you, says the sovereign 
Lord. Mm. I will raise my fist against all the prophets who see false visions and make lying predictions. Wow. And they will be banished from the community of Israel. I will blot their names from Israel's record book. Woo! And they will never again set foot in their own land. Then you will know that I am the sovereign Lord. Now, let me say this. It is possible for any man or woman of God to get it wrong. Mm -hmm. Let me say this. Mm -hmm. Please hear me. When you operate in the prophetic of which every born again, spirit filled believer should, it is possible to get it wrong. It is possible not to understand what you saw, what you heard. It is possible. So I am not talking about this person got it wrong. This I'm what I'm saying is, how did the whole body of Christ get it wrong? How did the whole body of Christ? And when I talk about the whole body of Christ, I'm specifically, I'm really talking about the evangelical church. Let me just be plain and clear. I'm really talking about the evangelical church, the ones that have the most influence, the ones that have the most, the loudest voice, the greatest platform, the greatest influence that have, that have, e that have even had President Trump's ear. Okay. All right. Now, why did they get it wrong? It's because this is what the Lord said. There is purity. There is a lack of purity in the body of Christ. Mm. There is a lack of purity in the body of Christ. There is a lack of purity in the body of Christ. In Matthew, Matthew chapter 5. Glory be to God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. If you can see God, then you can see what God is doing. Amen. I got to say that again. If you can see God, you can see what God is doing. But if you cannot see God, then you will not be able to see what he's doing. Come on, somebody. Yeah. And what's happened is, is this is what this is. Here's the word of the Lord. The church has tried to put God in the box of the Republican Party. <laughs> Hear you the word of the Lord. God is not a Republican. God is not a Democrat. That's right. God is not even American. Come on. God does not bow at, God does not stand at a pledge uh, and put his hand on his heart. He does not salute the flag. In fact, the flag ain't even in heaven. That God is not even, he's not even a, a, a part of the constitution of the United States. Let me say to you, that America is not even a Christian nation. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be clear. America is not a Christian nation. Mm -hmm. America is a religious nation. Mm -hmm. America is a religious nation. He is not, America is not a Christian nation. Mm -hmm. Somebody say, well, why? How is America not a Christian nation? Because America was never founded on the truth of the word of God. They put that America picked and chose some things from the Bible and made its own religion called American Christianity. Come on now. How could America be a Christian nation when preachers are in the pulpit and slaves in the basement? Come on, somebody. How could America be a Christian nation when it was founded on Masonic principles. The founding fathers were Freemasons. Let me just throw that out there for you. Ah, also, 
the founding fathers were slave owners. Come on, somebody. No, no, see, the only reason why you don't like to hear this is because your heart not pure. Only reason why you don't like to hear this is because your heart not pure. If that's you and you struggling, you just, because your heart not pure. And let me tell you, God calls 2020 to bring disruption to America. America is delusional. And God says, listen to this. God says, America is the rich young ruler. The rich young ruler, I don't have time to go here. But the rich young ruler brags about how it's keeping this law and keeping that law. And Jesus said, if you really want to be perfect, in other words, if you really want to be mature, come sell everything you got and follow me. In other words, sell out and follow me. And America has never done it. America has never sold out to follow Jesus. America is a democracy, mm. not a theocracy. Mm. Heaven is a theocracy. Mm. Heaven mm. is Jesus is the king and there is no voting. That's right. America is a democracy. It is a government ruled by the people. Right. In order for America to be a Christian nation, you would have to have every person in agreement with the sovereign word of God. That's right. But America is not a Christian nation. Mm -hmm. And this is what God says. He says, I'm tired of my people putting me in a box of religion. I'm tired of Christians trying mm -hmm. to put me in a Republican box. Mm -hmm. He is not Republican. He is not Democrat. Mm -hmm. And some people say, well, what about abortion? This is the word of the Lord. Mm. In Proverbs 6, it says um, there are seven abominations. Say that. He said, here's the seven abominations. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, yes. hands that shed innocent blood. Yes. We know that hands that shed innocent blood is about um, ab abortion. But he said there are seven abominations. This is America. They want to pick out that abomination and exclude all the abominations. And God says, no more. You don't get to do that. No more. You had a president that was prideful and lying and you whitewash. That's what it says in Ezekiel 13. Yes. You whitewash his pride and you whitewash his lies. All in the name of personality. God is not pleased with the body of Christ. That's right. Also, you had a president who clearly had racism in his heart. I'm going to say it and I'm going to be clear. Racism in his heart. And people were okay with that. And what did that do? It allowed racism that's been in America from the foundations and it embodied and emboldened racist people. Right. This is the most divided right. this nation has ever been since the 1860s. Right. When you have a president that says democratic states, democratic states, democratic governors, get that. Listen, that's why this nation is divided. You want to make sure you hear the rest of what God showed me. I'm going to tell you the rest of what God showed me. He said, listen, also, a heart that devises wicked schemes, feet that run to mischief, a false witness. We know that the president, along with many other politicians, have lied. And I'm not here to say that President Joe Biden or Kamala Harris are poly, you know, you know, squeaky That's clean. What, what God is saying is that wickedness in the Democratic Party and wickedness in the Republican Party. Yeah. Hear me. Yeah. There is no yeah. party that is righteous. Yes. And there is no party that is more righteous than the other. Yes. I'm breaking your religious bubble. Your yes. religious yes. self-righteous yes. bubble yes. that you want to sit up there yes. and think that God approves of the Republican Party more than he approves of the Democratic Party. No, God says wickedness is wickedness wow. and it shall not reign any longer. Oh God is separating the wheat from the tares. Right. And he says a false witness who utters lies and one who spreads strife 
among the brethren. Those are the seven abominations. And President Trump has been a divider in chief. He has spread uh, a strife among the nation. Yes. Hear the word of the Lord. He has spread strife and division among the nation. Yes. Okay? And the church, now, and the church allowed it. And the church and the, allowed it. The church allowed it. The, the church, church. The church adopted his rhetoric. The church adopted Listen, his rhetoric. The church adopted it. Yes. The, the, the evangelical the church have been the most divisive, yes. most wicked people I have seen yes. on my timeline yes. for this last year. Yes. And so God how, says that they are self righteous. They are self righteous and they are also, God is exposing the self righteousness. That's why the prophets were wrong. Yes. That's why all these prophets were so wrong. Why? Because they were standing in their self-righteousness, standing in their American religion. Yes. And God says, no, I never told you that. I never showed you that. Now, let me go on. This is what God is saying. He is saying that abortion is the same as racism. He is saying abortion is the same as spreading division. That's right. He is saying abortion is the same as pride. He is saying abortion. He said there's seven abominations yes. that he hates. That means he puts them in the same category. You can argue with God all you want. With your self-righteous American religious That's self, right. you can argue God with that all you want, but it's right there in the scriptures, yes. seven abominations yes. that he hates. And yes. that's why there's impurity in the body of Christ. Yes. That's why the body of Christ is so impure yes. because we blind an eye to this wickedness, yes. but we want to shine a light on this wickedness. Yes. In fact, yes. if abortion was so wrong in the eyes of of the evangelical church, how come nobody has come out and spoke against the fact that it costs forty to fifty thousand dollars to adopt a child? Yes. The devil is a lie. It costs forty to fifty thousand yes. dollars to adopt a child. Yes. That is wickedness. Yes. How come there are no homes for these children? Yes. What we do is we put children in these homes, and it mm. it takes years. They get in a system. They get in a pedophile ring. Do your research. Yeah. I am not saying that abortion is okay. I know abortion is wicked. I served on the pregnancy yes. board yes. here in Rockford. We support the care we center. The care center. Yes. We have had them at our church. We give to them. We support them. Come on. All those that talk about abortion is wrong and you have never done anything to help mothers who are looking to have abortion, you are a hypocrite. hypocrite. Churches should be the greatest donors of the pregnancy care centers. Churches should be the greatest donors volunteers. of volunteers. Churches should be the greatest volunteers and donors. Churches should be building children's homes. You want to talk about abortion, but you ain't built a children's home. On, you want to talk about abortion, but you got kids in the system. That is self-righteous and the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Glory and be to God. let us be clear. We are independent. We are kingdom citizens first. And the problem with the body of Christ is they don't understand that. Yes. They have put the sovereign God in a political box. Yes. And when you look up the definition of politics in its form, yes. it means by any means necessary, whether moral and or immoral, they will accomplish what they want to accomplish. So the body of Christ has taken the living word of God, which is quick and powerful and sharper yes. than any two-edged sword, piercing and dividing what is soul and spirit and put it in a low-level political form. Bringing you cannot, God down. You cannot merge You cannot the merge Satan heaven. Satan is the God of the world yes. system, period. Period. The kingdom of God, we are ambassadors in this world with diplomatic immunity. Yes. We are to have dominion. Not to merge. Yes. You cannot merge a world system with something that is pure. Yes. And God is done with that. God is, is done with that. that up. We are in Matthew 24 and he is done with the, he is done with that. Listen, Roe versus Wade was passed in 1973. And people think that boy, if we just overturn that, we're gonna get God's favor. 
Hang on for a second. You ain't repented, America, of 400 years of slavery. You ain't repented, America, of another 100 years of Jim Crow. America is self-righteous. First, repent of the foundation of America. Repent of the slavery. Repent of the Jim Crow. Repent of that. Don't try to go back to 1973 and think that you're going to get the favor of God. You need to go back to the 1600s when America first started being settled and colonized. You need to go back to 1700s. You need to go back to the Constitution. You need to go back all the way back there to where God was there and you rejected the purity of God's word. You need to repent of that and repent of the 100 years of Jim Crow laws. Repent of the racism that's been in the body of Christ. It has been a foundation, and that's why America has always known war. Yes. That's why America has always known hurricanes. I'm going to tell yes. you this. The reason why there's hurricanes that come from the Atlantic West Coast of Africa is because they are coming. They are coming. They are coming. No, no America no. has never repented no. of slavery. No. America, no. that's why there hasn't been any reparations. It's not even in the Constitution. No. America has never repented of slavery. Now, you can have that if you want to, and but you can do your and research and do your denial and delusion. But America has never repented of slavery. America has never repented of the Jim Crow laws because repentance causes you to give something. If somebody does something wrong, true repentance means you're going to give something. And America has never given of itself because of that slavery. Come when you now. receive Jesus, you don't just repent. You give yourself over to the Lord. That's right. America has never, rep America has never made right that thing. Now, that's why so many Christians are okay with the Confederate flag Come being up. Now. You mean to tell me? That you are a Christian and you are okay with the Confederate flag that represents slavery, that represents Jim Crow laws. See, that's the impurity. Impure. You want to tell me you a Christian and you are okay with statues that represent slave owners? On, you want to tell me? Tell me. I'm going to tell you that God told the children of Israel... Tear all those statues down. God told the children of Israel, don't make those statues. Why? Because statues conjure, they conjure up spirits. Yes. They conjure up demonic spirits. Yes. And we have seen in 2020, Christians defend Confederate sta uh, flags and Confederate uh, uh, statues. Now, that shows you America has never repented. Yes. Because if America repented, they would have done away with the Confederate God, flags. They would have done away with the Confederate statues. Yet you have a president who uh, who uh, defended Confederate flags, even told and NASCAR, even and told NASCAR church. to stop not allowing the Confederate statues. You, I'm telling you, you have a church that is impure, impure. and that's why you're facing what you're about to face right, right now. I'm telling you, judgment is coming to America. Yes. I saw it with my own eyes. Yep. Now, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this, that in April of this year, I just found this just not months ago. Go to Facebook, type in global flame, two words. Go to Facebook, type in global flame, type in global flame. I don't care who like this or who don't. I'm giving you the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Go trust those prophets that were wrong yeah. then. Yes, they go to, to go to global to to flame. I'm not trying to win no votes. We're we not. I'm not trying to win nobody's we're, votes. Nope, I'm not trying nope. to be a people pleaser. No, I'm giving you the word nope. of the Lord. Mm -mm. Okay? Nope. Go to global flame. I found this. I saw somebody post this. And on April 18th, there is a apostle. Dajuma Musa, who said judgment was coming to America and it is going to be the battle for America's soul. <laughs> Woo -hoo -hoo! What was President elect Joe Biden's slogan? The battle for the nation's 
So, what was President Joe Biden's slogan? The battle for America's soul. This prophet, this prophet said that judgment was coming to America and it's going to be the battle for America's soul. How is it that it took a prophet from Africa, a prophet from Africa to see by the spirit? Why? Because these evangelical pastors and preachers and teachers and prophets, they live, breathe, and eat American Christianity. And that is not the kingdom. No. That is not, not the, the kingdom. kingdom. That's why God had me start a series called God's Prophetic Agenda. Also, Google... And the body of Christ in America is so partial yes. that when you call out purity for what it is, yep. they automatically assume something that is incorrect. Yep. Automatically, yep. that shows the lack of impurity. Yep. That shows how far a person is from the unadulterated word of God. This is what the Lord said. He said, purity causes unity yep. and unity causes power. Yep. Now, think about it. The last four years, people have said this man is a man of God and he's a prophet. And I've even heard that he's anointed. Let me tell you, he's not anointed. Anointing the anointing removes burdens and destroys yokes. Oh, he's God. gifted and talented. Gifting and talented is not anointing. God will use gifted and talented people. Anointing comes from the Christ, the son of the living God. Let me help you. Anointing comes from the Christ. That's the anointing. It comes from the Christ, the son of the living God. He wasn't anointed. He was gifted and talented. God will use. Listen, we are not living. The, America is a theocracy. It's where we vote. I, I'm sorry. America is a democracy where we vote and the people choose. And then whoever the people chose, God allowed that person and God uses that person. But it's not a, it's not a theocracy where the prophets go and then they anoint the king. That's not what's happening. America is not Israel. America is not Israel. Let me say that again. America is not Israel. I mean, why, why? Because we're not saying that you can't vote. <clears throat> we're saying you can't merge. You can't merge. You can't you put God be, you can't in a Republican box. You, you cannot put that. God that in a Democratic stop. box. That has to stop. And what has happened is there has been a demonization of the Democrats. There has been a demonization. And guess what? That's not the body of Christ issue. Let me ask you a question. Why has the decline of church attendance been greater in the last four years? How come the body of Christ hasn't accepted the true power of God operating in the power of the Holy Spirit? That don't have to do with no Democrats. The church attendance don't have to do with no Democrats. See, how come all these prophets didn't prophesy the coronavirus? But what do they have? They doing what this president does. Conspiracy theories. We have more prophets with conspiracy theories and false prophecies than we do the word of God. If you look up Google the Gettysburg ghost, Google the Gettysburg ghost. This thing went viral. I said, Lord, what are we seeing? Now, listen, we know that there's no such thing as ghosts, but there's demonic spirits. He said, those have been conjured up because what's about to happen to America is about to happen. When I saw, let me go back to this vision. When I saw President Joe Biden, what you see on TV, people in the streets, I saw that. Mm -hmm. I saw that. And Long then... I saw this back in April and then guess what? It turned violent. Mm -hmm. I saw torches. I saw guns. I saw America. This is what God says. America is about to go to war. America is about to go into a civil war. 
America is about to go into a civil, hear the word of the Lord. And I saw in the election, I saw what I saw was a fraud. What I saw was cheat, scandal. This is what I saw in the vision. What did President Trump tell you? If you worship President Trump, of which the, what God told me, there is many in the body of Christ that worship him and idolize him. He's mm -hmm. throwing the idols down. Mm -hmm. If you worship, listen, this is what he said. He said, President Trump is sowing the seeds of what will happen. He's prophesying what will happen. And all you heard is it's going to be dangerously violent. Oh, it's going to, it's not going to end well. I'm telling you quotes that President Trump said. And he has sown and sown and sown. And God says that's all to bring about a civil war in America. And what I saw was that President Trump would not leave the White House. And even the military was divided. And I saw President Trump having to be escorted, taken from the White House. Glory be to God. Mm. What I'm saying is, church, you're going to have to pray. Pray. Church. And, and our church has been praying. You're going to have to pray. Yes, we've been because praying. Because November, December, January is going to be three months that America will never forget mm -hmm. and beyond. It will be, America will never forget it. And beyond. Nothing will come of the courts. But I saw this going on for months. I'm telling you. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Purity is missing in the body of Christ. Yes. That's why so many people can't see it. Yeah. Hear the word of the and Lord. They get offended. They get offended. They get offended. Don't be mad at me. Be mad at the devil. Yes. Yes. They get Don't offended. be mad at me. I'm giving you the word of God. Yes. Yes. Don't be mad at Pastor Latoya. Amen. Deuteronomy 10 17 says, For the Lord your God is God of gods and the Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who shows no partiality nor takes a bride. Amer God does not choose abortion over racism. He does not choose abortion over uh, pride and arrogance. He does not choose abortion over um, strife and division. He says that there are seven abominations. And America has chosen one to set their feet on as self-righteousness. And God cannot be fit in your Republican box. He refuses to go in your Republican box. Church needs to repent. God refuses to, repent. to go in your Republican box. You can put them in there all you want, but you will not have God. You will have a form, but you will not have him. Glory be to God. If that was the case, how come we don't see power all over this country? Revival all over this country. How come we don't see God's supernatural power? That's because they put them in the box of a political agenda. And this is God's prophetic agenda. Well, you got something else? Church needs to repent. The church needs to repent. We need to repent. The church, I'm talking about the evangelical church particularly, repent. needs to repent. And America needs to repent. And no, he don't take bribes. You cannot conjure up God to fulfill your prophecy. Hear the word of the Lord. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Now, there's another prophet out there. There's another prophet out there. I ain't gonna tell you his name, but he had a dream last week. From Saturday into Sunday, he had a dream that Joe Biden won. He saw Wolf Blitzer. This is what he said. You can, I ain't going to tell you what his name is. He said he saw Wolf Blitzer. And he said Wolf Blitzer gave the announcement. 
And then he said that America was going to war. Now, leadership team, did I not say that months ago to you? I told you months ago. I'm going to tell you what his name is, Prophet Brian Carr. You can go to his Facebook page. You can look on Prophet Brian Carr. That's who said that. Well, glory be to God. It's 658. I told you I ain't going to keep you long. So. Church needs to repent and we need to. Pray. I look forward to seeing y'all tomorrow morning at church. Empowering Work Christian Center, 4010 East State Street. Listen, I ain't come in here to get votes. No. I ain't no politician. No. I ain't trying to get you to like me. Nope. I, I don't want, I, if you don't like me, you don't like me. I don't care. Nope, you don't have to come. You don't have to come to my church. Nope. But I, as for me and my house, and as for me and my church and my people, we're going to believe the king. That's right. We're going to believe the king. And we will not whitewash mm -mm. anything that's not of God. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Bless you. We love you with the love of the Lord. Thank you. Why don't you like and share? Love and share it. Send this out. People got to hear this. Love and share it. Like and share it. Send this out.